You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, 1150 AM. Now, back to the show with local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. You are listening to The Money Hour on 1150 AM, KKNW, the Saturday, September 17th show. You can also listen to my show podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch my show on my show YouTube channel. And for addition information on events that I host, you can go to tinamitchellevents.com. I am your host and local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. I bring into studio each week the best of the best experts in our local market on everything regarding your money. And now in studio, very excited to showcase and share Marcel Allen of Dreamosity, the revenue ringlet and influencer's guide to financial joy right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Welcome back to the the show, Marcel. Hey, thanks, thanks, Tina. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, thank you. So to start out uh, my conversation with you this afternoon, we'd love to ask you, what mistakes do you see marketers making? Great question. So think about this with Peter, Pete Carroll of the Seahawks. You know, could he easily win a football game if he only knew the score in the last two minutes of the game? What would he do? I see marketers all the time and they don't take score until the end of the year. And I really want to encourage people to be looking at those profit and loss statements within a few weeks after every month. So they know if all their activities they did marketing online or on billboards or on the radio or whatever it may be, were those effective strategies? And was that style of spending keeping them at their goal or was it kind of taking them off the goal so for me being a poor decision maker with money does not mean a social media platform isn't worth the investment so people are often blaming Facebook when maybe they just didn't really pay attention (laughs) so I want people to pay attention And if you're waiting to the end of the year and looking at it one time, probably it's because you don't want to look at it and you're continuing to procrastinate through the process. So why not uh, work with somebody that is a numbers nerd, as is listed in the introduction that I gave for you, uh, Marcel, that you provided for me, but also um, because you love numbers. So you love to help analyze that Mm -hmm. and then again, help bring those into a strategy that is going to maximize those dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So Marcel, in financial joy, you wrote about a daily impact goal. How does that work regarding social media? Excellent. So it's a simple goal of impact. You know, sometimes people say, well, I want to help people. And I'm like, how many people do you want to help? Two, 20, 200, 2000. And, you know, before we were talking about being remarkable versus being consistent. And I'm not saying you have to be on stage in front of thousands of people every day. That's not possible to maintain for any of us. But occasionally we need to go beyond our comfort zone of talking to the same 10, 20 people. And how do we get, you know, I don't know, on a radio station or a big stage or a podcast somewhere where we can have a chance to help potentially thousands. And if we don't have a daily impact goal, it's hard to really grow. And so I encourage people to have a daily impact goal. Yeah, I once asked a a business owner, how many people do you want to touch with the product you have to offer? And immediately she said a million with a big smile and she sat up nice and tall. And as quickly as she sat up, she shrunk down and she says, there's no possible way I can reach a million people. And I says, when you reach one person and you share the gift that you have with your product, are they talking about that? And immediately she sat up and she says, I want to reach a billion people. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's really, and that's what you do, Marcel, is you help people get their message out Mm -hmm. there to massive people through uh, social media and understanding uh, how to manage their business and those numbers. So Mm -hmm. Marcel, what is data art? Okay, data art. So- Speaking of how to help a million people real quick, I actually helped a client once with Facebook advertising. We reached a million people, about 10,000 people clicked, a thousand went through the funnel. And then at the result, there was a $40,000 a month, right? So that was an example of how reaching and to, to pay, to reach a million dollars or to reach a million people does not cost a million dollars, but it does, it costs something. Um, and data art would show that story in a beautiful picture or kind of a scribble, even if you will. But data art in general, it's a creative practice to inspire reflection, analysis, and appreciation of our progress, right? It's taking logical information and reshaping it with artistic presentation. 
So all those people who love to scrapbook, paint, doodle, draw, get out the coloring books, this is a way to make that business numbers a little bit more enjoyable to digest and understand. Yeah. And when I first met you, I went to one of your <laughs> workshops uh, way before COVID and we were in person <laughs> and I shared um, uh, the balance that you have with um, the analytical and the numbers and, and the dream side, but also the, um, the numbers and the uh, creativity side of it and the way you bring everything together was just a real pleasure to be a part of that, uh, Marcel. So you mapped out 20 types of revenue in the revenue ringlet. Why did you do this? So I did this because we're often listening to advice from people who never made money in the way that we're trying to make money. And that's very, it's like trying to learn golf from a football star or learning copywriting from a photographer. Like sometimes it just, it's not going to mix. So the 20 types of revenue, it also allows for um, a variety of beautiful colors and patterns when it comes to making data art, right? So people who have multiple gigs or a side hustle, it's going to have a different picture than one person with the, the same job, you know, year in, year out. Uh, and so the person making money with real estate would have a very different patterns than somebody who is selling courses all around the country, right? Compared to somebody who's doing a massage service, right? So to me, there's just different rhythms in the sales. And I believe if we can make it more fun to look at, it would be really helpful. And I also want people who are starting over or if they get stuck, they need to see this buffet of options. You know, we've got a mental illness crisis in our country right now and people get stuck. And I'm like, there are so many ways to do good in the world. Like, how can you get stuck when there's over 20 ways? And I mean, there's even more than that. But if you were to bucket them down, and make a pretty color palette. There's a lot of ways we can do good. And I really wanted to inspire this. Hey, that's possible. They just need to be learning from somebody that's done that. Because when we learn often from folks who haven't made money in what we're doing, it's hard to be innovative and, and to branch out, right? Like there was nobody to learn from regarding a humor education company before it was there, but it was, I knew enough about selling courses and public speaking to, you know, to do some good. So it's just a fun way to look at it. <laughs> so we have Marcel, she's a numbers gal a creativity yeah. gal, oh, yeah. a humor gal, and a dreamer. Yes. That's a powerhouse, Thank right? You. Yeah. So Marcel, what are some of the benefits of trying uh, data art? So the biggest one I would say is awareness, mm -hmm. but it's fun. It's a form of self-care that helps us choose. So not just like, you know, a bath, but it helps us make decisions. Um, it's relaxing and then it can shift conversations with our advisors. So if we have a different picture to, to take to somebody like Lynn or like Tina, we could come to them with a different story versus just words. If we can show them, here's what I've been doing for the last six months. Can you help me better understand it? To me, um, that creativity can help people um, empower us more strategically. Yeah. And, then, and that's another thing that, oh, go ahead, Marcel. I was just gonna say, and also it helps us more confident with decision-making around money versus depending on a spouse, an advisor, you know, cause we should have some, some confidence with those, those big decisions. Cause there's a lot of them in business. Yeah. Yeah. And you uh, mentioned story and it's another thing I want to shout out. If you're listening to the uh, show today, when you're doing any, uh, which strategy it's important that you have both the facts and the data for the logical side of the brain. Mm -hmm. And you have the story for the emotional and the creativity side of the brain. So when you can bring both of those into um, how you're looking at your business, how you're marketing your business through your social media, that's when you can really um, attract both what we all have, a mm -hmm. left and a right-hand side of the brain, right? Mm -hmm. So Marcel, how could a salesperson benefit from data art? Making rejection pretty. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's good. How do you make rejection pretty? Well, and, and, and depending on the, the type of mark you would make, it's literally, it's honoring your effort, right? So whether that's a cold call or a Facebook at bat or a video at bat or whatever, you're making your attempts noticeable. And I think over time, it's really, really important to honor all the good that we've done. And it also helps us understand our own patterns and our sales territory, because understanding our sales territory is going to help us focus our activity when it comes to networking online or off. Yeah. And you'd mentioned earlier in our conversation um, about the, the results from uh, social media and blaming Facebook that you're not getting the results that you want. 
there's minor adjustments. Would that be a correct statement, Marcel, that there's where somebody like you, an expert can come in and make minor adjustments to how that marketing is being put out there in order to completely change the results? Would that be an accurate, accurate statement. Yeah, and exactly. Cause oftentimes the social media will do a lot of posting, but we forget right. to have conversations and conversations are where the sales will likely take place. And so people often think social media will replace that talking to people and we still need to talk to people, right? So yeah. the data art, you can actually see the visuals of like, well, did I have seven conversations today or 20 or two? Yeah. That's going to change. You know, the patterns are going to change week to week. Absolutely. So what is influence opacity? Yeah. So opacity is a graphic design term, but influence opacity is this idea. And you know it, Tina, like we all do that when we walk into, sometimes when we walk into a room, it's like cheers, boom, everybody knows our name and it feels like, you know, Christmas or something wonderful. It feels good. So you would have a saturated opacity in this example from a visual perspective, but say you walk into a conference center and you maybe know two people there, right? You don't know a lot of people. Nobody really knows you. And so the visual would have a much lighter, more transparent or pale opacity. So when I'm looking at creating a visual for a sales territory, I might have say 10, 10 visuals on the grid. And some of the opacities are dark, like a dark, rich, navy blue. And some are like a soft baby blue because we're not really well known yet. So getting your name known in some circles, it's going to take a different marketing approach, a different amount of whether it's podcasts or videos, or maybe you collaborate with that collaborator or the, you know, the event or group owner. And so influence opacity, it's one way. It also keeps our ego in check because <laughs> yeah. I think as like thought leaders and authors and bloggers, there's a good chance where we're like, man, I feel like everybody should know this. But in reality, like there's some community in Ohio that we've never heard of you, yeah. <laughs> you, know, and, they yeah. need you. and so it gives you, it always gives you someplace to go and, and to give and to share and hopefully find an opportunity to serve and, and sell at a higher level. Yeah, there is a lot of different ways in the journey, uh, the road trip of marketing success, but there's one way that's going to get you there much quicker. And that's what Marcel can really bring in for your business to help you navigate and to find that best way to maximize uh, your marketing dollars and your marketing results uh, within social media. So when it comes to communicating, do you prefer an improv? approach or a scripted approach? So I love both. And I often measure. I'm glad effective. you said that. Yeah. <laughs> I measure, I measure both too. Cause sometimes I'm like, man, this really perfectly scripted appointment will do great. And sometimes the improv, you know, meeting at a art show will do great too. And so I think it's important to honor both that you can have some pre-planned words. And then you can also just passionately speak from what you're, you know, working toward and they can both be very effective. That's why I wanted to share that. <laughs> well, this is a perfect example of the show. I mean, there are very specific words that are and designed in the format of the show, but what we're doing right now is the improv a part of it. I have no idea what you're going to, what your answer is going to be. And it allows us to have that conversation. So I'm glad you said that because I try to bring that in of the balance of improv. Um, and absolutely uh, there's parts that have to be scripted so that you're staying on task and you're staying on time. Mm -hmm. So uh, Marcel, can you, can anyone influence decision-making yeah. So as you look at your body of work, I believe that people who have cleverly crafted content, it's one of the best ways to help people decide, right? So depending on our sales process or sales funnel, whatever you want to call it, there are pieces of content that help us choose, but that personal touch is when we actually get fronted with the ability to make the decision, right? The ask. And you always say the task is to ask. I love that you say yes. that. I quote you all the time. Oh, thank you. Um, and and so to me, the content should be elevating the ability to choose. And oftentimes we'll, you know, depend on stock imagery or really simple content. And so I, I think as influencers, the better their content is from a, is this helping them make a choice, a decision? Yeah. I think that's the direction a creator should be looking because if it's just pretty and not useful, like in business, that's not really valuable other than yes. just my heart's happy, but like we want to move an industry forward or an idea or a service forward in the community. And I do believe that more people could be more powerful with their influence if their content was aimed at helping people make a decision. 
Yeah. Yeah. And definitely the task is to ask and you help them to ask it the best way to maximize the results. Correct. Absolutely. Because the idea it's not maximizing. If we're not maximizing our results, we're being a disservice to the people that need the product and service that we have to offer. And if we don't have somebody that can help us in finding that perfect market that mm-hmm. needs our product and service, then we're wasting our resources. And that's less mm-hmm. people that we can ultimately help. And the smaller difference that we're making in our community, which ultimately that's all of our individual goals as business owners. Correct, Marcel? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you again for coming into studio. It's always a pleasure uh, to have you here with your smile, your humor, and of course, uh, your expertise in your business. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you.